Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought today we'd have a little bit of a discussion on, I guess, the pros and cons or the benefits of our large scale batch painting. So, you know, more than a few models at a time. So as you can see in front of me, we've got a unit of 15 of these Stormcast uh, Vindictors and, um, you know, we're going to paint them up. So while we have a discussion on this, I'm going to go through and paint these in my custom color scheme, which you can find on the channel. I'll leave some links in the down there for you so you can uh, have a look at those. And I'll put in the top right hand corner now um, the uh, painting of Vindicta uh, with the color glazing on the brass armor and so on. And you can see how that's done. But today we're going to have a little discussion on, on some of these benefits of, of doing it in, in a batch situation. Now, normally speaking, I don't normally do things in such large batches these days. Over the course of my my life with the hobby, that's obviously changed. In the early days, I would do large scale batch painting a lot. Uh, these, these days, I tend to only do it for early stages of painting, and then I usually scale down to smaller groups or even singular models. I just find that ends up being more satisfying to really dig into the, the painting of each figure. Um, I tend to get more, more fun out of it that way. But, you know, each to their own. We're, we all find our own way, and many people like to do these large batches. If you're someone that really loves gaming more than more than the painting, then this type of idea is good. Um, so there's pl plenty of benefits. We're going to go into it now. Um, but, you know, as part of that exercise, I'm going to do all these at once in, in, in one big batch, uh, just like you would do. Uh, so there'll be no uh, scaling down to smaller amounts. Um, I'll try to record as much of that process as possible while we talk, uh, but I think it'll be fun, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, have a bit of a, I guess, a conclusion at the end as to as to how well I've gone and how I feel about it uh, coming out of this, because I haven't really done a large batch like this in a while, so it's going to be interesting for me as well. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, yeah, I guess let's get started. Okay, so, you know, batch painting. Well, you know, as I've alluded to, it's not something I personally do a huge amount of, at least past, you know, initial stages, um, you know, of, of base coding and so on. Um, generally speaking, I tend to uh, move towards more singular painting these days. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but we'll go into that maybe a bit later. But initially, you know, what is this idea of batch painting? Well, it's where you get a number of models together. In this case, we're talking about large batch batch painting uh, and those methods. And it's generally whole squads or multiple squads, sometimes even whole armies, 24 hour challenges and things like that. You'll paint the entire lot in large groups. Uh, and this type of bulk painting uh, can be really beneficial. And, and that's what we're really talking about here. So in this case, we've got 15 models that we're doing in one, in one go. So what that means is you're doing one color and completing that color, moving on to the next step, completing that step, moving on to the next step and so on. And you're not really alternating between different steps on different models. You're trying to keep a unified, uh, holistic approach to doing, doing all of the models in one go. This limits your your downtime. So, you know, picking up and putting down models, that sort of thing, um, having to clean your brush each time or change paints, change palettes and so on. So you're minimizing a lot of the uh, in between moments that you do with painting, which will then speed you up. So it is an efficient way to paint. And so that's what we're really talking about here is, you know, um, gaining access to this type of uh, approach. There are a lot of pros to this, but there are also some cons. So I guess we'll start with the pros. As I said, you know, your your speed is obviously greatened because you're not um, getting those in-between moments as many of them, right? So it's like a maths equation. It's going to uh, maximize the individual time you spend on each model. It's going to be more efficient. And overall, it'll be a shorter time frame per model. So what might take you, let's say, two hours per model normally in this batch approach, you can halve it or even quarter it. it. It might only take 30 minutes per model because of all those little tiny moments in between. Think about how many times that you're, you know, you turn over to look at something on YouTube or you're, you know, doing those sorts of things as well. Um, generally speaking, when you get into this batch mode, you're, you're also more focused uh, generally because you're preparing yourself for something that's a bit more laborious. So there, there's all these types of little sort of focal point reasons why this becomes actually quite, quite, quite positive. And, and you're able to get a lot done. And most people who are more into gaming 
often go towards these types of uh, techniques where you're large batching things because it, it, it gets your painted models on the table, right? So often there's also a set of approaches that often come with batch painting. You can see that I've chosen to do these Vindictas, my Stormcast color scheme, because it is actually designed to be done, it can be done in this fast way. You normally don't do like, you know, um, 10 layer shading and highlighting techniques, you know, sort of display standard sort of techniques on batch painting. That's not really what you do. You're choosing techniques which are um, mass producible over a lot of models and that they're quick and fast each step. And you're trying to limit the number of steps between start to finish as well and limit the number of paints and so on. The more of those things you can limit and, and, and hyper focus, the more chances you have of actually getting this uh, done and getting it in an, an effective time frame. So I guess those are sort of the more positive aspects to this, but there is also some downsides. And I guess this is where, you know, I tend to veer away from the batch painting, or at least um, I, I quickly move from that quite early because of the, these reasons. And so um, what it does do is make this more of a job. You know, uh, once you get into this kind of batch painting idea, uh, it does start to feel more like work and less like a hobby and less like something creative that you're doing because you're just sort of monotonously doing this task over and over again. You're not really getting a chance to actually get into the flow and the, the, the real feeling of, of painting, of, of creativity. That requires a more sort of, um, you need to be active. Your mind needs to be active. You need to be sort of in the moment with that, you know, feel the flow of the paint as it, as it does its thing, you know, understanding that control and that interplay between you and, and the figure. So th this is something that most artists experience. We get this sort of Nirvana-like state. It's not really active thinking. You are on a kind of autopilot, but you're definitely very, in tune with what's happening in the moment you know I often use the I often equate this with surfers when they catch the perfect wave you know they're they're in that euphoric moment and that's what we're always chasing as, as artists as creative people you don't have to be consider yourself an artist to experience this this actually happens a lot um, in, in many different uh, places you know um, chefs and cooks uh, uh, experience it you know many people experience this type of euphoric moment but it's especially true of creative pursuits uh, and 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 there is an element of monotony that allows you to get there. So in some respects, this kind of batch painting can get you to that moment. But what I find is it's, it's a little bit shallow and it doesn't last as long. I find that when I dig into a singular model, uh, I tend to find that the overall experience is deeper and richer because I'm, I'm focused on that and, and there's progression there, there's, there's development, there's learning uh, going on. Whereas these type of processes in these larger batches tend not to uh, really push yourself in terms of the individual techniques, but does push yourself in other aspects of it. So the, the, yeah, it's a it's a pro and con, I guess, in equal measure. I guess it's a personal thing. You're going to have your own, I guess, feelings on which one is better for you. But I often find that these days, that's what I come to is that it often doesn't give me the, the satisfaction that I'm looking for uh, in, in, in my, you know, hobby sessions or my sit down to paint and so on. I, I tend to not get a lot of out of that, that larger batch thing. But for other people, they do. And so that's really about self analysis and critiquing your own work. And this is, I often talk about this, about becoming self-aware and, and having intention behind your actions. These are sort of highbrow ideas, but um, it's something that artists always are, are contending with. We're always self-analyzing and critiquing ourselves, not in a negative way. I'm not talking about like, oh, I'm bad at painting. I can't do this. I can't do that. Not like that at all. It's more about assessing process and, and, and how you, you're interacting with your creativity. So your your you know that that that's that also encompasses the space. Like how is your space set up? How are you how are you um, you know integrating your creativity into your life? Do you have a separate area? You know, is it in a room? Is it in the living room? Is it in the kitchen? You know, where is it? How are you when are you doing it? When are you a morning person a night? You know, all these types of little questions that build up and build up to give you a, a broader picture of how you actually create and, and, and how you are how you're effective as an artist. And so those types of questions, you want to start to become active with your painting and with your hobby because it will help you and that will give you an idea as to, you know, where to change and where to shift. I like a lot of variety. So as I said, for me, I don't mind doing this type of batch painting, but I will quickly move away from it once it starts to become 
like work or like a drag, then I'll slow down and I'll, 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 I'll focus on smaller groups and incrementally get smaller and smaller and smaller till I'm basically painting one model. But I will have already gained enough of the, of the positive aspects of large batch painting to, to make that uh, useful, right? So that, that's, that's, all, that's all it is. It's about figuring out who you are as a person and how that's going to affect your overall painting process. And, and, and I guess that's where, you know, we'll, 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 uh, I guess, leave it at this at this point for you to think about, you know, what's your process? How do you do you only batch paint? And does that leave you a little bit lacking, like 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 inside? Like, do you feel satisfied with that or do you find it a little bit repetitive and that it's not really giving you that invigoration or that 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 deeper sense of satisfaction or those aha moments as you learn and get better? Um, I often talk about, you know, having the fast and the slow techniques on your models, you know, areas of focus, areas of speed, you know, also going from a single model to a to a batch and so on and, and doing that refresher model in between projects and so on. I think all of these things are really important. If you go back through my chats, you'll be able to uh, take a look at those. And what I'm really trying to craft here over this last year and, and over these chats is to give you a broad spectrum of, of ideas and, and, and basically for you to develop you know, hopefully, your own sense of practice, of, of, of artistic uh, direction for, for your creativity, because you should really see it in these terms. Um, you don't even realize it, but all hobbyists engage in art fundamentals, even if you don't think about yourself as an artist. You know, it's so funny when you, you talk to the average hobbyist and they start telling you about color theory, they start telling you about, you know, um, you know, the kinds of color combinations that they're using. They don't even realize half the time that they're speaking about art fundamentals and yet they know so much about it, but they don't equate that to themselves as being creative often. It's always, um, oh no, that other person is talented or that other person has these these elements or these creative, you know, um, abilities, but you yourself don't see it. And and, and I think that that's, that's really the, the first steps to breaking some of that is to um, be become more self-aware of, of your techniques, your practice, how you engage with your hobby. And that will give you a better sense of how you should be approaching these for you. Because what I do may not work for you. As I've said many times, you shouldn't be listening to just me or anything like that. You should be have a broad spectrum of, of information that, 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 you're, that you're consuming so that you can make the best possible decisions for your own hobby and your own creativity generally, your mental state. You don't want to be only parroting one piece of information so you should never just listen to me this is only one one aspect all I will say is that you know yes self-analysis um, you know intention figuring out those things that make up who you are as a hobbyist and as a creative person and then integrate as many of the different types of little techniques and ideas and and so on that can help expand and grow uh, your your interaction with this hobby and you should end up with something you know a, a, an artistic practice that that really is satisfying and lasts the length of time so that you don't have you have less burnouts you have less of that sense of FOMO you have less of all of those types of things that plague us as individuals as consumers of this type of product, um, you'll have more armor around you to be more self-controlled um, and, and in the end, uh, create better, better quality output, you know, creative work in the end. At least I think so. So, you know, that's, that's really the point of it, I think. So there's some uh, thoughts on batch painting and its usefulness, I guess, pros and cons, um, you know, that you can take on board or, or not, you know what I mean? And uh, But it is, at the end of the day, a technique that is useful under particular circumstances. As I said, for myself, it's not always the one I go to, but here we can see, you know, it works on this particular colour scheme for sure. I mean, these Vindicta models are great. You know, they're really, really well sculpted. The techniques I'm using here uh, go really well on them and they're a pleasure to paint. So in this particular case certainly it, it, it was a good choice in others maybe not but you know you get you get a really nice result as you can see um, you know the sculptors have done a great job of giving you all those nice cut lines and everything that you want um, out of these types of techniques to get it done efficiently and give you something really nice at the end so i hope that's all been uh you know at least uh informative in some way for you i'll leave an image of these together in a, a nice photo for you and an overview view at the end with the the paint list and so on but yeah i guess that's it i hope you've enjoyed this please hit that like button subscribe button it really helps me out and i guess i'll uh catch you on the next one